Hello learners. Welcome to Mathematics in the Modern World. Today we're going to talk about patterns in nature. Patterns exist when a number, shape, color or a certain phenomenon occur repeatedly. They are found everywhere. In plants, in animals, in human beings, in the universe. For instance, the occurrence of day and night, and why the spring season begins at different months for the northern and southern hemispheres. These regularities are clear patterns in nature. Most of the time, number patterns are more likely associated to mathematics. And speaking of number patterns, let's talk about the Fibonacci sequence. To start, who is Fibonacci? Fibonacci is an Italian mathematician whose real name is Leonardo Pisano. Literally, Leonardo of Pisa. This is because he was born in Pisa, Italy, with almost the same time when Italians started building the famous Leaning Tower of Pisa. He existed around 1170 to 1250 and is said to be the greatest European mathematician of the Middle Ages. He traveled in Africa and some parts of Asia where he met different mathematicians. His famous book Libra Bacci, or the Book of Calculation, introduced the concept of Hindu Arabic numerals to Europe in 1202. These are numbers that we are using today. In mathematics history, it is believed that the concept of zero originated in India, and the sequence named after him had been described earlier in the Indian mathematics. So what is this sequence all about? Before we finally reveal the beauty of this sequence, let's have first his famous rabbit puzzle which was published in 1202. The problem goes like this. At the beginning of a month, you are given a male-female pair of newborn rabbits. Rabbits take a month to mature before mating. This means that after a month the rabbits have produced no offspring. However, every month thereafter, the pair of rabbits produces another pair of rabbits which are male and female. The offspring reproduce in exactly the same manner. If none of the rabbits dies, how many pairs of rabbits will there be after one full calendar year? To illustrate the solution, let us consider young rabbit pairs and adult rabbit pairs. At the start of the first month, one pair of young rabbits are introduced into the population. Since it takes one month for rabbits to get mature before mating, then at the start of the second month, no new pair of rabbits are introduced. However, this marks the reproduction of the next generation, since the young pair in the first month are now the mature pair of rabbits. Now, at the start of the third month, there are two rabbit pairs. The adult pairs, which are the parents, and the young pairs, which are the baby pairs. Following this pattern, the adult pair begets a baby pair, but the previous baby pair simply matures. So a family of three rabbit pairs are present at the start of the fourth month. And so on. Take a look at the table to see a total pair of rabbits after one year, assuming none of the rabbit dies. The number of total rabbit pairs at each generation constitutes a Fibonacci sequence. And the number of rabbit pairs at the start of the 13th month can be taken as the solution to Fibonacci's puzzle. That is, 233. So let's look at the total number of rabbit pairs with respect to months. This is a sequence down here in the last row. The sequence goes like this. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34. This is a number sequence called the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence has a unique pattern. If we look at this number 2 here, we see that this number 2 is 1 plus 1. It's the sum of the preceding two numbers. Also, the number 3 is 1 plus 2. The number 5 is 2 plus 3. The number 8 is 3 plus 5. 13 is 5 plus 8. And so on. So every number then is the sum of the preceding two numbers. And we can write that as an equation. f sub n plus 1 equals f sub n minus 1 plus f sub n. This recursion relation gives the next Fibonacci number as the sum of the preceding two numbers. To start the recursion, we need to specify f sub 1 and f sub 2. In the book of calculation, 0 is not the first Fibonacci number. But if 0 is included in the sequence, we can let f sub 0 to be equal to 0. And amazingly it doesn't violate the recursion formula. It can even extend to negative indices with negative values. So following the formula, if we look for the third Fibonacci number f sub 2, that is just f sub 0 plus f sub 1. And that's just 0 plus 1 or simply equal to 1. Fibonacci discovered that the number of pairs of rabbits for any month after the first two months 
can be determined by adding the numbers of pairs of rabbits in each of the two previous months. For instance, the number of pairs of rabbits at the start of the seventh month is 5 plus 8 equals 13. The Fibonacci numbers are so amazing that we can see them almost everywhere around us. Have you tried counting petals of flowers? In most flowers, we can see these numbers. A calla lily has only one petal. A trillium has three. Buttercup, wild rose and hibiscus have five. Cosmos has eight. Corn marigold, cineraria and ragwort have 13. Semasters have 21, and a daisy can have 13, 21, 34, 55 or 89 petals. And what is special about these numbers? Exactly. These are the first few numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. But remember, not all flower petals follow the Fibonacci sequence. Now, take a closer look into this photo of a sunflower. Notice the apparent spirals in the florets radiating out from the center to the edge. These spirals appear to rotate both clockwise and counterclockwise. By counting them, one finds 21 counterclockwise spirals and 34 clockwise spirals. Surprisingly, the numbers 21 and 34 are consecutive Fibonacci numbers. Other sunflowers have 34 number of counterclockwise spirals and 55 clockwise spirals. Do you think this is just coincidence? No. In fact, all the sunflowers in the world show a number of spirals that are within the Fibonacci sequence. Let's take a look at this pineapples. Pineapples have spirals formed by their hexagonal nubs. The nubs on many pineapples form 8 spirals that rotate diagonally upward to the left and 13 spirals that rotate diagonally upward to the right. We can also observe 21 parallel rows of nubs spiraling steeply. And again, the numbers 8, 13 and 21 are consecutive Fibonacci numbers. The sequence is also observed in the growth of plant and vegetable branches or even in some vines spinning around the stalk. Inside the fruit of many plants we can also observe the presence of Fibonacci order. Cut an apple crosswise and you will see five sections. A common citrus could have eight. And most bananas have three sections. We also have pattern arrangement of seeds in fruits. For example, pine nuts. Pine nuts grow always from the base of the pine cone as spirals towards right and towards left. 8 spirals spinning counterclockwise and 13 spirals spinning clockwise. The same pattern is also observed in the spirals of some succulents and cacti. It seems like it is happening by coincidence, but these patterns are also present in broccoli, snail's shell, human bone, dolphins, hurricane shapes or even the complex structures of a galaxy. Actually there are still a lot more examples of Fibonacci numbers appearing in nature. And not only in nature, the pattern also appeared in the Pascal's triangle. When you get the sum of the numbers using lines as shown here, we see Fibonacci sequence of numbers. So what do you think of Fibonacci sequence? Is this a mere coincidence? Or is this one of the simple patterns that constitutes to the complexity of the universe? Let us know your opinion and leave us a comment below for your answers. In our next video, we'll talk about the golden spiral and the golden ratio. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.